What's up you guys, welcome back to the shop. We're gonna be reviewing Tactical Masters. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, so before we, we continue, I ask you guys to please sub and like the video. It's very important, very crucial for my staff, for the producer, for me, myself. It means a lot for the store. So please go ahead and do that right now before we continue. So. Uh, to get into the set, uh, it it's going to release three new archetypes, um, kind of how like all si uh, side sets do it, like for example, <clears throat> uh, Genesis Impact and uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Grand, last? Creator. Grand, Crea yeah, Grand Creator. Uh, Grand Creator, oh, great set, probably the best set since uh, before Power of the Elements. Um, most of these sets aren't designed to give you like, how would I say, like a, long, like a super long format like Power of the Elements in other sets, but uh, it does give you like that side help or like makes, how would I say, like tier one or like tier 1.5 decks kind of playable. And of course, a lot of these uh, side sets bring like engines and you can add them to your decks. So I think that's what they're designed for. Um, of course, it's a different style from a core set. You're gonna get your, your holograph, your super rare guaranteed. And I think it's, uh, I believe it's six rares, correct? Six rares. And uh, you know, super different from your core sets. So to start off, the main selling point of Tactical Master, as we all know, is Collector uh, Droll and Lockbird. Of course, it looks like Konami has been um, putting into these sets uh, a star card, like a staple, a hand trap, something that we, we use consistently in all our decks. Um, does it mean Drone Lockbird is always in our decks? Not really, but it is a card that always is good to see a high rarity. And like I said, like I just said, it's the main selling point of this set. So uh, besides that, we have very good staples like Trap Trick, Cosmic, Anti-Spell that got collector rare versions as well. Um, so that's good to see. Very good selling points of the set and scapegoats in here. I don't know how that's really going to play out. It's a good card overall, but not really necessary right now. So if you are a fan of, of nice staples and, and, and holographic staples, it's a good reason to go buy out uh, to buy the set. Go to your local OTS store, get a couple boxes. Uh, the pull rates are very good. Um, one of my customers, uh, you know, two out of two, Manny, he pulled two collector rares and two boxes. So it looks like Konami is definitely putting in a good amount of collector rares in the in the cases. So. Um, I think in Genesis it was like two or three sometimes, sometimes even like one. Um, it, it varied, but I think this one really, really did a good consistent four. I opened around 15 cases, so, and I got a consistent amount of four uh, collector rare. So kudos to Konami. I think that's a very fair ratio. I wish it was like six or seven, but you can't get everything you want. So um, besides those staple cards, uh, we are going to talk about the three archetypes, which is uh, Runic, um, Runic, Labyrinth, and uh, a a uh, Valiant. Valiant, Valiant, which is like a Pendulum Samurai Machine uh, like kind of archetype going there. <laughs> a very, very, very hot one. But um, so yeah, with that being said, let's get into the first archetype. All right, you guys, so we're gonna get into the first archetype, which is the most popular one on online, as you guys, uh, I don't know if you've seen from other YouTube channels or just, um, you know, just the meta analysis from like the LCG and stuff like that is Runic. It's a deck that uh, its main strategy, its core strategy is supposed to banish cards off the top of your opponent's deck while using spells that kind of do hinder your battle phase and they, and they aren't as powerful as like we've seen before, like Sky Striker, but it is a cool mechanic and a, it's kind of niche mechanic. Um, it's different. We've ever kind of seen something. It, it mills your opponent out slowly, not super fast, like you know, like some like those degenerate morphing dart thing decks. But um, it is a pretty good strategy. We we have cards like Runic Fountain, which can draw you up to three cards, and then you have Runic Tip, which is very powerful to search you any cards. So I think uh, the deck has a lot of potential. Um, it super similar to Strike Strikers. You're going to be putting a lot of monsters in your extra deck zone. So you're going to be putting. Um, uh, so Gary the Runic Fangs, Moon in the Runic Wings, and Hugin the Runic Wings as well in your extra deck. And they all search cards, and they're very tool, um, toolboxy uh, like cards. And the deck's super cheap, so good good time to pick it up. If you guys want to check it out with DGD player, I should, as Mad Cards of Hell, should have most of the cards. All right, you guys, so next coming up is the Labyrinth deck. So Labyrinths are a deck similar to Trap Tricks. They focus on traps, and you get uh, resources. Very simple deck, nothing too complicated to play. A little bit slower strategy, but it is a very modernized archetype. Um, I see it does have potential. I'm still new to it, so I'm still learning. But it, it does have that like trap trap trick feels pretty slow, nothing crazy. Uh, the Ariana and Ariane are kind of the weep tax cards of the of the archetype. Um, they should always retain good value just because they do have effects like drawing and searching off of your trap cards. So the archetype overall is decent. Um, hopefully, we do revisit uh, the archetype in a future video, and I can give you guys more of a detailed. View, but I don't um, I don't see it being like tier one or, or tier one uh, tier zero so 
that's out of the question. The last archetype, and it's gonna be Valence, which is a pendulum based archetype. It's like samurai spellcasters and uh, just, it's, it's, it's odd, it's an odd one. Definitely don't know too much on it. Um, I do know it utilizes zones to, 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 zones to create advantage. Um, so I know the best one is obviously uh, the uh, Shino Nume, which is a very cheap card, $2.39. Great pickup right now, great buyout option. Um, I think the card deserves to be at least five. It's a searcher, searchers are always good in archetypes. The archetype though, it needs work, it needs some placement. It has nothing over the top, nothing too broken. So, but I am, I am curious to see what they're going to do, uh, if they're going to give it more support in the future, or they're just going to make pendulums a little more playable with other cards. So, all right, you guys. So, we're going to touch up on the staples in the set and key reprints. So, Astrograph Sorcerer, a card that we haven't seen reprinted in God knows how many years, gets its first reprint uh, in a rare form and a collector rare form. So, that's great to see. We have Cosmic, we have Droll and Lockbird, we have Trap Tricks, we have Anti-Spell, Scapegoat. Great cards that uh, the meta needed to see a reprint of. Um, and it's, I'm glad to see it in this set. And some of these cards, uh, they go, they probably go hand in hand with some of the archetypes in this set. So great, great set to put these cards in. Of course, um, we, we, we want to try to pull the CR versions of these staples. You're going to see them pretty expensive on TCG Player. Will they drop? Maybe just a little, but they are hard to pull. Uh, you know, for someone that opened a lot of cases, I will tell you guys it is very hard to pull these cards. And if you guys are meta players, you want to look for that play set of anti-spell, that play set of droll. To, to flash out your deck and you know to stunt on your opponents so it's gonna be a little bit pricey keep in mind draw i don't see dropping over 100 and i don't see anti spell dropping under 100 as well so um in my honest opinion you guys i think this is a great set uh if you want to go out and you know have a little bit of fun and pull those collector rares and build decks that aren't you know super powerful super uh dominant but they are like uh decks that you can mold and, and create a strategy that will beat your opponent um, if they're using, uh, you know, like sp uh, Splite or Tear Elements, it's going to be a different strategy. You're going to have to practice. You're going to have to build something creative. And that's a cool thing about this set. And I think it came out of the great time where we, we still haven't had Darkwing Blast. And, you know, you could incorporate these archetypes into other archetypes or, you know, make it on their own and see how it fares against those, those uh, Tier 1 decks. So with that being said, you guys, please remember to subscribe. I appreciate everyone that subs and likes the video, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you.